Some carvings are finished with a clear natural finish or a wood stain that allows the grain of the wood to show through. For our project here, we're trying to do two natural chipmunks on a stump. And for that, we will paint those chipmunks in their natural colors. Carvings can be painted with anything from household paint to coffee. However, the easiest to use are artist paints, either oil-based or acrylic. My favorite is about acrylic. Water is used to thin and mix it. It is used to clean brushes and paint that is not dried. This paint dries fast, and after thorough drying, it can be painted over. It can be easily washed away using denatured alcohol after it's dried. The only two matte acrylic paints that I have found are Golden Brand Matte Fluid Acrylic and Josanya Artist Colors. I have been unable to find these in local art supply stores. You can find them at James Company dot com or at dickblick.com. I get ready for painting by getting my work table set up with all of the materials that I think I'm going to need. It, it causes lots of problems with paint drying too soon and other things whenever you have to stop what you're doing to find the tools and the paints that you need. This is how I arrange my table. I use one of the palettes in front. The round one is watercolor palette available in any art or hobby store. The small flat sample of bathroom tile is my favorite for painting small items like this because it works well and is much easier to clean up when you finish for the day. The paints you're likely to use are arranged where you can get to them instantly. The two larger bottles are acrylic gesso, an artist term for a base coat to carry artist paint, and acrylic gloss varnish to use over finished painting for eyes and other things you want to be glossy. It's good to have several clean brushes available. A container or two of water is necessary for use in mixing paints, cleaning brushes, and general cleanup of wet acrylic. You can use a drinking straw to measure water by the drop when you're mixing acrylic paints. I use a popsicle stick or an artist palette knife or a small brush to mix colors on the palette. A supply of denatured alcohol is needed to clean brushes of dried acrylic or to clean dried acrylic off the carving if you need to remove the paint and change the color of what's on the work. A container of brush soap is to use before putting your brushes away for the night and that'll greatly extend the life of your brushes. You just wet the brush, rub it in the soap and rub it in your hands good and rinse it out and you can leave a little soap in the brush. It helps to keep it soft. A handy roll of paper towels is necessary to keep things neat. Painting can get messy quickly. We simply squeeze a little paint from the jar or the tube out onto the palette. Then add a few drops of water using the drinking straw to the closest color to what we want to achieve. Then we use the brush to take a tiny bit of the other color on the brush and mix it into the predominant color, keeping at it until you get the color and consistency you want. You'll want to use a very little bit of the darker colors because they'll go further than the lighter colors. All colors should be blended in a thin and transparent wash. This makes it easier to paint one coat over another coat and build up the colors and blend them together across the animal. Now we're ready to paint. Prime the entire piece with warm white, white with just a touch of raw sienna. Paint the top area of the pieces with a mixture of mostly raw sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt umber, and white. Blend with clean water 
the area between the warm white belly and the top area of the two pieces. The inside of the ears should remain white for now. Using Payne's Gray with a little white thinned to a charcoal color. If you need to mix it, black and ultramarine blue makes Payne's Gray. Paint the tail and the edges of the ears and the area under the stripe on the sides and down the middle of the back using short strokes. Make a black mixture of Payne's Gray and Burn Umber to paint the black stripes down the back and the sides using one half inch strokes and leaving some charcoal showing. Paint the eyes solid black. Paint the hair around the eyes, inside the ears, and the toenails using warm white. Using the same mixture, paint the white part of the stripe down the sides. Using a very thin mixture of black and white, paint the forehead and the outside of the ears and between the ears, down the back and on the tail using short strokes. Use the same mixture to touch up the tail with short strokes. Mix a thin watery brown using a mixture of burn umber with a touch of white. Paint light streaks in front of the ears. Using this same mixture, paint a soft streak joining the black streaks on the sides to the areas behind the eyes. Make a watery, very thin mixture of mostly raw sienna and some burnt sienna and a touch of burnt umber. Paint several washes of this watery brown over the flanks, the rear edges of the muscles, the upper side area, the front of the head, in the front leg area. Make a thin watery gray wash of black and white and paint unevenly over the animal, adding a touch of burnt umber in places. Touch up the white area around the eyes with warm white mixture. Paint the inside of the ears with a thin wash of burnt sienna. Touch up the eyes with black. After the eyes are thoroughly dry, paint over the eyes with two coats of clear gloss. Now we're going to have a look at the finished project. You should be able to tell from these pictures how we have worked to make the chipmunks fit on the stump that we had for a natural habitat. We know that you're probably not going to carve a chipmunk. But the techniques that are shown in these five videos are techniques that are used in carving animals, in doing other kinds of carvings, in painting carvings, and in uh, mounting them. So we hope that they'll be of help to you.